Hi, this is Shane with the Rational Trader. It's Thursday the 10th, and I had um, not the greatest day in the markets here. Uh, max loss day in oil, minus 14 ticks, minus 13, so almost basically max loss in euro, uh, minus three ticks in the yen, and uh, zero in gold let's take a look at gold here the gold here there was a late trade here that i didn't get filled on that would have mitigated some of that loss a little bit not much um there's a nice move here actually that um is signaled with the this code here 254. i wouldn't have gotten filled i'm not trading that action that behavior um but you it's nice to see it ah, okay maybe it has the opportunity to show up in future analyses it also sees this little turn here, the, 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 that, that little bit long. But in any case, zero today for me in gold. So I didn't, I didn't smooth out the bump of the loss in the other markets. And so that's putting me at, uh, this is actually the first time here we've had two sort of, you know, more than 100 lost days in a row. Um, and we talked last night about you know, trying to we were trading multiple markets to smooth out the bumps, but this this is what could happen when it when it doesn't smooth out. So let's let's dig in to the analysis a little bit to understand sort of what change I made and why. Okay, so from the 26th through right here, the 21st, I was running one set of behaviors based on one analytical process. Now we reviewed that a couple nights ago. Let's bring it up again and take a look at it um, from beginning. So here is that slide. So the, the top shows, you know, train the machine learning system on data through June and then break the data up into four week buckets and then, and then make predictions on uh, in each of these, in, oh, on each of the trading days in these buckets. Okay, so we're using this model, and then we're we're basically running a a, a replay. And you're actually going to see that program in a minute that uses the predictions from this model. Okay, and then we and we're, we separate them out into uh, buckets in order to see commonality. All right, and when we do that, we then we then take the um, we finish the analysis that says, okay, these are the behaviors that I see that repeat over time. And then we, what we wanna do is we wanna actually run a simulation or, or a replay across the entire set of buckets here. So this entire time frame from mid-June through, uh, in this case, it was end of November, okay? And the reason we do that is, is, is you, may, you may have a behavior show up in this first bucket and the second bucket and, and it's nicely profitable. But then it shows up later on and isn't. All right, and so you, what you wanna do is finish your analysis, you're looking for common behaviors and now run run the entire, uh, run the set of behaviors across the entire data set. Okay, so that's actually what I have here. If I can find it. All right, um, so this is the, the replay program that takes the, uh, the, the predictions and applies them to the trading days using the trading the trade management that uh, I, that I use with with some variables here. Um, in this particular case, we're going to run um, the data the data file that's got the date that has data from mid June six eighteen through eleven thirty, and it's using that model that was trained on data through actually it was through um, June fifteenth. Okay, so the Friday before this. All right, and then if we run this program, what we're gonna get here, let's, uh, let's just run it. This will take, take a few seconds here. So uh, while we're waiting for that, um, what we, what we're, again, what we're doing is, is we are, we're gonna run the, the analysis of the behaviors that we see commonly for the entire period now, not just for individual buckets. And we, what we want to do is we want to see if uh, the set of behaviors that you know, it's defined here, these set of behaviors for longs and shorts, um, how do they how do they perform across the entire period, not not just in each individual bucket? And what we see here is 1,081 ticks. So for oil, that's uh, almost 11 11,000 dollars, 10,810 dollars. 
on this many trades. This is the number of days in that, in the data set, 120 days, all right? And 24 of those days were max loss days, all right? So that's, 20, that's exactly 20%. So 20% of the time, your expectation is that you're going to see minus 14 ticks here or, or, or thereabouts, okay? Um, that's using this uh, pretty conservative set of, of codes, all right? What I did is, I, as I expanded to more markets, I, I found that markets that don't have as much movement as oil have less commonality to find in each of these buckets. So if we, if we go back and we look at this now, um, like as I was analyzing the euro, I, I, it, it doesn't have as much movement, and so there aren't as many of these common behaviors. And so I, I struggled to find um, something that looked like it was worth trading. And so at, at the same time, what I noticed is that the, the in this in this particular case, it was the euro. That market had undergone. Um, some changes in the way it was in the way it was behaving and i was concerned about am i am i too out of date by looking back too far all right um and i don't know so we're, we're running an experiment to find out so I, I i came up with this other method to analyze the data that that um doesn't look at commonality in the buckets okay it just looks for efficiency all right, so basically amount of profit divided by number of trades. So the, few, the, the highest amount of profit on the fewest number of trades. Okay, so looking for, but just, just for the most recent behaviors, uh, with more data. So we have a different model that's been trained on data through the, in this case, it's through the end of September. And then we, we do the same thing. We break it up into three buckets. We look at each of those individual buckets. We look for the, uh, the efficient, trades and then we combine them and we want what we want to do is we want to analyze now let's let's take that that set of behaviors and run it across all three buckets the entire time frame okay and so that's what we're going to do here now uh, kind of live though this is recorded uh, that's that ends up with this set of actions here okay so, or behaviors, I should say. So let's put that as the active one. So we have to go and just put it down here. And now it's, because for those of you that don't program, because it's last in the list, it'll be, it'll be used in the run. And then we have to change the file that we're using because we don't want to run this across all six weeks here since the, the machine's seen some of that data. All right, we only want to run it on data from the end of September forward. So that's a different file. All right, it has a smaller data set in it. And we're going to use, um, so that's this file here. You'll notice that it's, you'll notice this here, 10 1 through 12 21. You can tell I did the analysis uh, right around Christmas time. Okay. And we had slightly different trade management. We did uh, a little bit less conservative trade management. So we used an entry offset of one. This means that. Where the bar closes, how many ticks back do I place my order? So the other one was minus two. In this case, this is minus one. So this is a little bit more aggressive. All right, and now let's run this. And this is gonna give us an, out, an answer for, for um, those behaviors for this period of time. It'll be less, you'll, what you'll see here in a moment, it's less, less number of days and, and um, seen because there's less, uh, uh, a smaller time frame involved and a different uh, profit and max loss days. So there it finished. In fact, what's, I find this curious. It, it, that took 8.6 seconds. That's since the uh, since the file was loaded. On my development computer, it takes uh, 5.2. So it's a faster computer. Um, okay, so what we see here is across 58 trading days, so uh, about half the other one. All right, it was 120. We see uh, this profit amount, okay? So this is half the time, profit is 828. So you can see that the profit per month is higher, 
All right, so you would have, basically you would double that to get uh, to compare it to the the, the one thousand eighty one from the previous analysis. All right, so again, this is tick, so multiply by ten for dollars, um, and you can see that okay, that's attractive in terms of there's there from the from an from just from the analysis on the predictions made on past data. The the potential is higher. Okay, but you have to we have, we have to be careful. We, we need to look at that number. How many max loss days is there? Well, there's that's 17 um, out of 58, which is almost exactly 30 percent. So it's 10 percent greater. All right, uh, and so what what that means is is that we expect to see more days where we we're taking a max loss but it's gonna get made up for because we're, uh, the other days are gonna make more. That's what, that's what this analysis tells us, all right? So this is what's guiding my decision here to switch to, I switched all four markets to that analytical process. And that's, what, that's, the, that's the test that we're running in, in January, all right? So and ultimately what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare um, the total results, where my, where my log go? The total, you know, the results from this period to the results from, uh, the holiday weeks might screw it up a little bit. So the, to the results from uh, starting, say on the 7th, going out for, for, for four weeks as well, all right? And the, the question is, okay, well, do, do, do you see that it's a, an overall greater profitability across that time frame? That's kind of one question, and the other is, um, you know, you know, how ugly does this get? All right. So for for some folks, they would rather stay with the other the other um, approach where there's a, you know less max loss days, uh, but you end up you have less profit potential. All right. Um, but we don't actually know that yet. We we have actual real data here across four weeks that says, okay, that's what I can make using that set of behaviors. Um, in a real money account. Uh, we need to do the same thing for this analytical process, and then we're gonna use that as data to make a decision on what to do, all right? If it turns out that, um, you know, this, this first method here is better, that's gonna cause us some, that's gonna cause me some problems because uh, I, had, I struggled to find commonality in the markets that don't have as much movement as oil and gold, so we'll see. Um, maybe that maybe that is what it is, and I I use the uh, you know this first method for the markets that have a lot of movement, and I use a second method for those that have less. That would be one approach to dealing if that if if that's the case. All right, but it, it, it naturally this this question comes up right because this is the first time we've seen a couple of days in a row with some losses. And uh, we wouldn't be having this conversation basically if it was the opposite, but it's very human to start questioning uh, if what you're doing is, is correct because it's not, that's not the result that I want, all right? Okay, so that's where we stand. Uh, today is Thursday, we got one more day in the trading week. We'll see, this is, I'm down about uh, just over $300 this week. And then we'll see, is that right? Something like that. Um, and so we'll see what tomorrow brings and we'll see what, how we end the week. And then we can, I'll probably do this kind of uh, video in a little more depth on the, uh, at the end of week review video, which will come out uh, probably sometime on Saturday. Okay, take care.